Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lorena and I love to share my recipes with you. And if you've been here before, then hello again. Today we're going to do a Peruvian recipe that is typical also for birthdays and christenings and things like that, such as the chocolate truffles that we did, that we did uh, last week. But these are kind of like sugar cookies, but they're mostly made of corn flour, so they have a really nice a melting in your mouth feeling when you bite into them and they're filled with manjar blanco. As always, if you want to see the full recipe then all you need to do is click on the link in the description box below and that will take you to the blog where you will find lots more recipes. Also remember that if you like this video you can always put thumbs up to it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. I'm now going to make these Peruvian alfajores so if you want to see how it's done then keep on watching this video. The first thing that I have here is butter that is at room temperature, so it's really nice and soft. And I'm going to cream it up with sugar. Once you have a smooth paste like this, we're going to add the egg yolks. If you see, I've added cream foam to the top of my egg yolks, and I made sure that it touched the surface of the egg yolks because if you have them on there and you leave them for a while they will form a skin. So here I have my mix of dry ingredients. It's mostly corn flour. I also have a bit of flour and that serves to strengthen it a bit and so that it doesn't crumble apart as you're forming the alfajores. It also has baking powder and salt and I sifted it because, especially if you have your corn flour open from a couple of days before, for example, it tends to form a bit of lumps, so I sifted it just to make sure that it didn't have any of those. If there's something that you don't want to do with this, is over mix it because they will go really, really tough. So just mix them enough so that you have a nice and even dough. Okay, so once it has come together like this, we're just going to wrap it in cling film and uh, put it inside the fridge for 30 minutes to rest. This is super important or else you won't be able to roll it out. So now I'm going to make the manjar blanco, which is the caramel that we're going to fill our sugar cookies with. And manjar blanco like I've said a couple of times before, is like the Peruvian dulce de leche. So it's really similar in texture, but the taste is um, quite different because the recipe is different, basically. So what I have here is equal parts of um, evaporated milk and condensed milk, and I'm going to just keep stirring them at a medium to low heat until they caramelize and become nice and thick. Now you may be thinking, well, that's a large pot for that amount of milk. And yes, you would be right to say that. And that's because I want it to happen faster. This, this takes about 20-30 minutes and so I want as much of the milk to be in contact with the bottom of the pan as possible just so to speed uh, things up a bit. So medium to low heat and just be really patient and don't stop stirring because it will stick to the bottom of the pan and burn. At this point we're about two-thirds through, as you can see it's already starting to caramelize, it's uh, darker than it was before, and I can almost see the bottom of the pan when I mix. At this point I know that it's ready because I can clearly see the bottom of the pan, um, and it takes a while for it to go back, and so now I'm going to take it out of the pot. Okay, so now that it's ready, I'm going to take it out, I'm going to put it inside this container, try not to have a really small container because it will take longer to cool down, and we can go on to our uh, cookies. And of course, don't leave anything in the pot. Okay, so I forgot to turn on the microphone for this section, so I'm just going to walk you through it with uh, my voice. So I'm basically just rolling out the dough on a floured surface and with flour on top as well because it has so much butter in it, it can be a bit sticky. 
So you want to make sure every time you roll it out that it's not sticking to your table. Once you like the thickness, we can cut out the cookies. Then we transfer them onto a baking tray with silpat or even baking paper. Well, I went to pause the video and I realized that I did all of this without audio, which you probably realize by now. But I did want to mention something that I uh, said on the previous video, but of course it has no sound, so you didn't get to see it. And that is that with, uh, with the egg yolks that went into the dough, I had two tablespoons of water. And so even though it says so on the recipe, I didn't just want to let it go and not tell you guys. So there you go. This also has two tablespoons of water. On the other hand, I also want to say that if you were to keep the dough in the fridge for a longer time because you can keep it in there for three days then you might want to leave it outside for maybe half an hour let it come to room temperature a bit just so that it's easier to roll out because if not because it's so buttery it's going to start to break okay so the cookies are in the oven right now and I'm just going to wait for them to come out and then I'm going to pop these in and then I'll see you in a bit all of them are out of the oven now and I've let them cool down to room temperature because if I was to fill them with a manjar blanco while they're hot, then the manjar blanco would melt and that would be a huge mess. So now I'm just going to put a bit of the manjar blanco in here and then just top it up with a lid. And that is a perfect alfajor. Oh, and the people who asked me for this, who were Peruvian, they kept saying this phrase. I want you to make those corn flour alfajores that uh, melt in your mouth. It seemed like a copy-paste thing because everyone said the same to me. And the trick to have them melt in your mouth so that when it goes in, it literally falls apart on your tongue, is not to overcook them. So cook them the very minimum so that they're cooked but not golden. And the other thing, which is much trickier, is you need to eat them on the second day. So on the first day, they will have a bit of a crust outside that's crispy, but on the second day, it will be completely smooth. So here's our recommendation for you guys. Do these really late, so that then you need to wait for them to cool down until the next day, and then you fill them up, because they really are much nicer on the second day. to do is to sprinkle them with icing sugar and I always like to use a tea strainer for this because the mesh is really really fine. And there you go, corn flour alfajores. cornflower alfajores recipe I really hope you liked it if you did like it don't forget to put thumbs up to this video it makes me really really happy please if you make this recipe or any other recipe from the blog don't forget to send me a picture or tag me on them because I really love to see what you cook also if there's anything savory or sweet that you like me to teach you how to make you can leave a comment below I'm posting recipes every Thursday and Sunday so if you don't want to miss any of them then I recommend that you subscribe to my channel it's free and only one click away you can also follow me on Instagram Pinterest and Facebook as cravings journal Thank you so much for watching this video and see you next time.